hey, we are going 10G. For some time, I've been wanting to expand my network and bring in a nice big uh, 10 gig switch. And today is that day. This video is a little bit impromptu as I wasn't planning on it, but I just uh, was so excited to get it set up that I figure I might as well uh, drag out the video and start generating some content. This is the switch that I'm going with. This is the Ubiquiti Unify US-16-XG network switch. It's got about 12 SFP plus network ports on it, in addition to four 10G base T network ports. I'm looking forward to adding it to my network and I want to share it with you as I get everything set up and configured. Stay tuned and I hope you enjoy this video. But first, a quick message. These videos are designed to supplement blog posts at the Tech Journal, my personal technology blog at stephenwagner.com. If you haven't already been, make sure you check it out. I've got tons of cool content on there. And remember, please, if you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy it. So I've had a chance to unbox the switch. This is the US 16 XG switch. We've got about uh, 12 SFP plus port connectors along with four 10G base T connectors. In my environment, I'm actually planning on using both. I've got a couple uh, HPE DL360P Gen 8s. Um, both have Flexalom cards with dual 10G base T ports. Uh, and then they've also got a PCI Express card. I think it's the uh, 560 SFP uh, with dual SFP plus ports. So I'm looking forward to using some CAT cabling. And uh, I also ordered some DAC cabling. DAC is actually a personal favorite of mine. It's very cheap, low latency. A uh, great alternative to fiber for uh, close proximity runs. I think you can't exceed three meters in most setups with uh, passive DAC cables, but uh, uh, there are active cables. I'm, I haven't played too much with those, so I can't comment on too much. But, but anyways, it's a nice little switch. Uh, we've got the uh, ports on the front. We've got some rubber stoppers protecting the SFP plus ports. Uh, LED activity lights on the front and the uh, trademark um, first generation Unify light. We have a couple of fans on the back, DC power, AC power, uh, decent weight, not too bad. You've got the uh, screw holes for the uh, rack mount options. Inside of the box, it comes with uh, an AC power cable, uh, the uh, rack ears, the nuts, and the screws, and uh, some other parts for your rack. So in my specific setup, but we're just going to have this sitting on top of the uh, existing US-48 switch that I have in place and we'll be running a DAC cable from uh, from this bad boy to the other switch. So uh, keep watching the video and stay posted. So fast forward a couple hours and uh, I've gone into my server room and I've set up the uh, the US 16 XG on top of uh, another Ubiquiti US 48 switch. Um, I think I have port 11 hooked up with a SFP plus DAC cable up to uh, one of the SFP plus ports on the US 48. Um, one of the reasons why I purchased this is because originally I had the US 48. Um, it comes with two SFP plus ports and two SFP ports. The SFP pluses run at 10 gig. The SFPs run at one gig. Now I have uh, three servers up there right now. Soon it's going to be a couple more. Um, but those two servers have um, a combination. As, as I mentioned earlier in the video, they have uh, two NICs. One is a Flexlom per server and one is a uh, PCI Express per server. Um, so each server essentially has dual SFP plus and dual 10G base T uh, connections that we can use to connect to the network. Um, I, uh, in order to get them hooked up at 10 gig, what I've been doing is I purchased an SFP plus to 10G base T uh, SFP plus module. That's a lot of SFP pluses. Um, and I've had those installed in the um, US 48 for some time now. And they've been working great. Uh, they've run really hot. I could be wrong, but I think I remember seeing temperatures of around uh, 89 degrees Celsius. Physically, if when you go to grab the uh, SFP plus modules, um, they're hot to the touch. Like it, to remove them, it's it uh, it's almost to the point where you can't pull them out. Um, I checked online, and I guess some other users are are also experiencing that. So I'm not too concerned, and it's within the temperature spec. Um, I actually adjusted the cooling in the room and got some fans that were uh, blowing on it, which helped out significantly, so I haven't been too concerned. Um, but the big thing is, is that when you use these SFP Plus modules to convert um, interfaces or media, um, 
latency is involved. And I guess there's actually quite a bit of added latency when you're converting 10G base T to SFP plus. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to actually get like a solid multi-port 10 gig switch. But at the same time too, uh, there's other reasons. I wanted to add more servers. I wanted to have flexibility with the uh, type of connections that I use to connect uh, servers, workstations and servers and whatnot. Um, and this will also allow me to connect more switches in the future, which is super handy. And the most beautiful part of it all is uh, the fact that, again, I can control, manage, and monitor everything from the Ubiquiti Unify controller, which is top-notch. Um, I'm, I'm almost kicking myself for not switching over to Unify years prior. Like, I'm, I, I almost feel like an idiot. <laughs> I had a lot of clients that could have benefited from this technology, from this vendor. Um, and no, I'm not getting paid to say this, um, although it would be nice. Um, but anyways, so uh, ultimately what I did is uh, after doing that little unboxing where I showed you the unit, I uh, went ahead and brought it upstairs. Um, technically I should have shut everything down while uh, hooking it up um, just because I do have some NFS connections and iSCSI connections running all over, but whatever, I like to live life dangerously. So I uh, set up the new uh, US 16XG on top of the US 48. Um, I went ahead and actually disconnected the uh, two RJ45, the CAT6 cables from the uh, 10G base T to SFP modules on the US48. Um, I quick th Those go to the servers. I quickly hooked those up to the 10G G base T ports on the US 16XG. Um, those lit up instantly. I was actually kind of surprised how fast it auto detected. Um, I could have them statically set the speed. I, I have no idea. Um, but um, Anyways, that worked great, quick connection, and then I just simply took a uh, one of the, uh, I think I bought, purchased uh, two of the Ubiquiti UDC-3 um, DAC cables, and I could be wrong, but I think they're, or no, it was a UDC-1, it's about a meter long, and uh, so I hooked that up to uh, the uh, one of the SFP Plus modules on the US-48, and then the other one to uh, one of the SFP Plus modules on the uh, US-16XG. And again, detected the connection super quick, and everything's working. It's great, the lights are blinking. Um, I've done a whole number of uh, connectivity tests, and everything's working, no packets are being lost. I also went ahead and did, uh, I used iPerf3 with a couple Linux virtual machines sitting on the two different uh, ESXi hosts running uh, VMware ESXi 6.5 and uh, everything's great I'm getting 9.2 gigabits per second with iPerf3 um, and actually I could probably squeeze out 10 uh, the only reason why is because with that specific network that I have I'm actually not using jumbo frames and uh, one of the big things is that if you're using 10G base T um, especially if you have single connections, whether it's for iSCSI or NFS, you always want to make sure that you have jumbo frames going. But unfortunately, those were virtual machines, and that was um, my uh, main LAN, so those are still sitting at, a, at an MTU of 1500 instead of uh, jumbo, which runs at 9000. So either way, it's working great. I'm super happy. Um, I always get a little bit of concerned with... Um, using SFP plus DAC cables just because I know that some hardware is pretty picky but everything worked perfectly uh, I have some more SFP plus DACs coming tomorrow so I'm looking forward to trying those out and uh, yeah I'm gonna let this run overnight monitor the uh, stability and then tomorrow I'll probably be uh, hooking up my HPE MSA 2040 SAN up to uh, a couple of the SFP plus modules uh, now in that case the MSA 2040 SAN requires you to use HPE DAC cables with it so in that case, I'll be using the um, certified HPE DACs uh, to connect it to the Ubiquiti. So I'm hoping that they work, but uh, but we'll see. I'm, I'm pretty confident that it's going to work. Even if it doesn't, um, I needed this switch anyway, so I'm pretty happy with it. So um, I'm going to be recording a bunch of videos, so I might have some other YouTube videos. I might have some content on the blog, so make sure you check it out. And again, uh, just like the intro said, uh, this is to uh, supplement the blog post. So read the blog post, check out the pictures, look at the other possible uh, uh, videos, and uh, leave me some feedback. I always like to know what you guys think. So thanks for watching this. And I almost forgot. If you want to hire me to help you with uh, anything that you've seen in this video today or any of the other videos or content on my blog, uh, feel free to check out the Hire Me section on my personal blog at stephenwagner.com or alternatively, you can head over to my corporate website at www.digitallyaccurate.com. Thank you very much and have a great day.